Hello, I'm going to show you how to do a practical into the resistivity of a metal. We're going to use this equation here. It is resistance is equal to resistivity, that's this funny looking P, letter called rho, times by the length divided by the area. Think about this for a moment. Which ones are you going to measure and which one are you going to calculate? It's a really simple practical in terms of this method, but you're going to need some good math skills and graph plotting skills as well. You're going to need to use a digital multimeter to measure the resistance and you're going to need to use a micrometer to actually measure the diameter of our wire sample. The material we're going to investigate is constantan and we've got 34 SWG standard wire gauge constantan and we're just going to stretch a one meter length of that wire onto our meter rule so that we can actually vary the length. Results table ready. My wire is stretched out over the full metre now. I'm going to attach one of my leads with a crocodile clip right at the end, the zero end, if you like, of the ruler. And I'm just going to leave that one there the whole time. Every multimeter is different, but pretty much all of them have a COM port, and you always will use the COM port. It goes through the computer of the multimeter. And the other wire should attach to the... Um, meter that you want. In this case I'm wanting an ohm meter so I'm going to attach it to the ohm meter setting. Then I'm going to turn my dial to one of the ohm meter settings and I'll check what sensitivity I need to use in just a moment. So turn the power on. I'm just looking firstly it's reading one because it's not connected to anything so I know it's too high for the meter. I'm just going to check well, what sensitivity do I need? If I go right to my end, that would be my very highest resistance. Well, it's certainly not 200 kilo ohms I'm likely to get, so I need to make the meter more sensitive. Let's try on the 200 ohm setting. 11.5, that seems to be okay, and that's as sensitive as it goes, so I'm going to have to be satisfied with that. So now I'm ready to collect my results. All I'm going to do is press this wire down firmly 10 centimetres away from the end of the wire. And record in my results the length, 0.1 metre, and the resistance, you can see, which is firmly set at 1.6 ohms. Then I move the next 10 centimetres. and I record the reading, 2.8, seems to be working quite well so far. Recording each time to the same number of significant figures. When I take my reading, I do get some slight fluctuations. But what I do is I let it settle and then I write down the highest number I see. So there I would read 7.4. And I do that consistently across all my results. And I'm using the same technique for each one. Therefore, I'm getting higher accuracy. I'm going to write 8.5 for this one. We don't really need to repeat that because if we did it again, we'd get pretty much the same trend. And actually, we're only trying to calculate just one value for resistivity. So really, we have got 10 repeats, just with different lengths. And that's going to give us an average once we've plotted our graph. I was a little bit disappointed to only get two significant figures out of my results, my readings for resistance. There are multimeters that have a finer scale than that, a higher resolution, you would say. Uh, but Really, I can see a definite trend, and I'm pretty confident I'm going to get a good result for my resistivity here. You could also measure current and voltage and use Ohm's law to calculate resistance. And that may actually give you a higher resolution, but it might actually be a higher error because you'll have compounded your reading errors. Now I've got my results, I've got my trend. 
Now I just need a value for area, cross-sectional area. Well, I can't measure the area. What I can measure is the diameter. Using this, it's a micrometer screw gauge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take five different readings for a diameter at different points along my wire. And that's because I want a really reliable uh, result for that area so that I actually end up with as close I can to the true value of resistivity of constant term. The micrometer screw gauge measures in millimetres to a precision of 0.01 millimeter, so two more decimal places from an ordinary ruler. The way you use it is you put the fine small object you want to measure in the um, gap between the measuring arms here and you close it until you just feel it touch with the main part of the barrel. Then you screw, do the last little bit of tightening with this bezel at the end and you'll hear it click and that means that you're actually just touching the outside that. You've not squashed it because you've used the fine bezel at the end. Now the tricky part is reading the scale. The first number of where the barrel lines up with the scale is your first digit. So I can see my first digit is zero. My second digit is actually defined by the numbers on the barrel and the numbers are zero to 50. So actually you've only got all the way to half a, half a millimeter there. I can see the line, the, the middle line here, measuring line lines up with two, four. So I know my next two digits are two, four. So this measurement is 0 0.24 millimeters. Now, as I said, I will repeat that at different points along the way. So let me talk through the analysis then. Here are the values of the length. That was the independent variable, the resistance we measured, and the five values of diameter that I took with the micrometer. Obviously the average, they were all actually the same. The average was therefore 0.24 millimetres. Here's where I've calculated the area. Um, I just did a spreadsheet, done pi and r squared there. Um, just remember when I did r squared there, I did need to be careful to change from millimetres to metres. I always do that before I do any squaring or anything like that. And here's the graph of r versus l. And Excel plots the trend line for you and it gives you the equation there. So I know that my gradient, this value, the gradient here is 12.006. I'm actually just going to go with, you know, 12 uh, because that's the same significant figures in any case that I was measuring to. Um, it also tells you the y intercept and that is 0 0.46 there and that's an interesting thing to talk about because that is actually an error in our um, reading it's an error in the whole line okay the whole line should really go through the origin because at zero meters well we've got zero resistance if we're two things are touching there's zero resistance in between them but it, the line starts at 0 0.46 ohms. Well, that is actually the resistance of the rest of the circuit that I was using. And we're not that bothered with it in this case because we're only actually interested in the gradient. So although it's a systematic error that's applied to the whole thing, there's not an error in this gradient, or that error doesn't apply to this gradient. Now, you'll remember me uh, talking about the equation that we're applying. It's the resistance is resistivity times length over area. Oh, well, okay, well this is R versus L. So therefore, this gradient represents rho over A, resistivity over A. That's 12. Well, we don't want to calculate uh, resistivity over A. We want to calculate <coughs> the resistivity of our constant term. So that is going to be 12 times A, 12 times 4.5 uh, times 10 to the minus 8, which is the area I calculated above there. I'm just going to do that on the calculator. Gives me 5.4 times 10 to the minus 7. And we need a unit there as well. Well, the unit of resistivity is ohms. 
meters, not ohms per meter, it's ohm meter, pardon me. Okay, thank you.